Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. We do want to greet you all that have joined us on this cafe Imad somewhat of a different format tonight because our Ach are out laboring and they will not have the time to get here that we would uh, uh, go through the regular process of our service. I'm going to take a seat tonight. How about that? And there's a place in the Torah in Chatveh that it says that when Yoshua, he was in the assembly of the Yehudim of the Hebrews, and then he opened the book in Yeshua. And he began to read from that book. And as he read, they were quite astonished at his power to deduct even by the reading of the Torah, how profound it was unto them. And it says that after he had finished reading, he sat down. And they began to ponder, what is this man going to say? And he began to direct their attention to the profoundness of the Torah of Yah, that they will be enlightened by that revelation the power of Torah in flesh, whereby there is no sin, no desire to defy the mitzvah, the commandments of Almighty Yah. And that is the place that we must get to, uh, that we must reside. Him sitting down shows that we must take our seat or reside in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. And the only way we can do that, Yisra'ya, is that Yoshua HaMashiach, he must be real uh, in our bosom. So may the riches of Yah rest upon you, our friends, and you that are listening to the broadcast on this Chatvei Imat, Arzachin Yaramiya, Yisra'ya, he was going to teach tonight, and I knew that they were not be here on time because... They are trying to finish up a job. And I said to him yesterday as we talked, he was excited about the message that Yah had placed in his bosom concerning the, uh, the seven voices of Yah. And I said, if you want me to, we can call off service this week and we can go from there. So I know he was out and he is out hasting, trying to get things done, understanding the need of the community. And uh, at the last minute, I knew that he would not get here on time. And listen, I have not really prepared, but I am prepared. All right? I have not sat down to look at things in a way that, uh, that my conscience and my ruach would be elevated for the time to speak. But I'm ready to speak. I'm always ready to speak unto Bayat Yisraya. I want to teach tonight... I have messages that I've never taught, and here is one. I know where I began on last Chadve Imat, but I want to take this in a different direction tonight because of many of the trials and opposition that we are being opposed by, we must have confidence in Yah that He is going to manifest Himself among us. We must hold fast to that Yisra'ah, and there is one thing that when uh, in all of our ignorance, as we were gathered in the bay of the tabernacle, uh, and we would have what we call tarrying services, uh, and what Yah would call it a Shabbat. It is a time that we wait, we endure, we wait with great tikva, that's hope, with an expectation. And so we were gathered in the bay of Yah, and we would, we would Shabbat. We would tarry, we would cry out, and we would intercede by the Ruach of Yah in all of our ignorance uh, that he would present his mandate. And that is simply that our ears, our eyes, our spiritual and mental faculties would be open that we could comprehend the depth, the breadth of the Torah of Almighty Yah. And there is an account in Torah where Dawid, as he began to Shabbat, 
And that is what I want to bring out unto us tonight. There's a time that we must wait on Yah. And in that waiting on Yah, we must zoba, we must tarry. And the tarrying is an expectation. You don't tarry not expecting from Almighty Yah. So we tarry with expectation. And there is a burning tick for a hope that cannot be extinguished because of the trials and the affliction. So we wait with expectation, knowing that he is our Abba, and he is going to grant all things according uh, to his Daba, his promises uh, unto his Rayan. And Daiwid, he speaks here so indelibly and so profound uh, in Tehillim Psalms, uh, 119 and verse 116. I want to begin here, uh, Yisraya. He says unto Almighty Yahweh, to Helium Psalms 119 and verse 166. He says, Yahweh, Almighty Yah, he identifies the one that he intercedes to. He says, Yah. I have tigva, I have hope, or I have soba, I have tarried, I have waited, I have endured, I have waited with great patience because I know that your promises, uh, they're all fulfilled in your Shua. He said, I have tarried, I have waited upon, I have tarried, Almighty Yah, I have hope. For your, your Hoshua, your salvation. And he said, I have done, I have performed, I have exercised my mind in your mitzvah, in your commandments. And in the midst of this great affliction that is upon Yisrael, we must have the ability to sabbat. And in our Sabbath, we must have the Yachol. It is a patience that endures. It is the patience of Eob. We suffer without murmuring and complaining. Because we know that Yah has all things under the command of his control. So we Yachol. We endure it. We have patience uh, to suffer the afflictions uh, the assault against the very testimony of our bosom uh, and that testimony is your sure hamashiach uh, and in our yahul in our patience uh, we have the power to overcome because we endure we expect from Yah. He has not left us Yisrael and sometimes uh, it simply takes us just waiting just waiting and the waiting is an expectation we look towards we know that there is substance in the midst of our trials we look toward the expectations of almighty yah so we shall have we shall wait we shall have we shall wait for yah we shall look with great Egotistic anticipation uh, of the promises uh, according uh, to the Torah. And that is what the Kava is. Uh, it is to wait eagerly. It is not to wait without expectation. Uh, we wait looking, Yisrael. We wait looking uh, for the promises of Almighty Yah. And in that waiting, what it does... Uh, it unites us uh, and binds our hearts uh, with Almighty Yah in Yeshua that we are Echad, uh, we are one uh, with Yeshua HaMashiach. So if there is anything that I will convey tonight, I want us to chava. I want us to wait eagerly for the promises of Yah. I want us to bind our levim our hearts and our love in the same united structure according to Torah that we will be one one with another and if there is one man that can, can give us any kind of perspectives uh, on this waiting it is Dawid 
In this waiting, Yisra'ya, we must take the stand of the Torah. We cannot take a stance that we that has evolved our, out of our minds, but it must be according to the Torah. And our attitudes must be shaped. We cannot allow our attitudes uh, to be altered because of trials, circumstances, and situations that we began to doubt Yah, and we began to uh, we began to assault Him. We can't do that, Yisrael. We must. Uh, we must wait upon him. We must chava. And in our chava waiting we stand. Look at this profound tefireth, this cry of prayer. Out of the loins of Daewid here in Psalms to Helium 25 and verse 1. Hallelujah. We can see the construct of this prayer. We know that when one truly waits on Yah, we must, uh, we must do it with great patience, Yisra'ya. We must do it with the uh, Yachul. We must do that with patience. Uh, and not only patience, we must hope according to the promises uh, that are in the Torah of Yah. And we know that and we expect Yah to keep His truth and His promises uh, that he has promised unto Yisra'ya, his nation, his people, that we will be equipped for the battle that he has placed us in. Not that we have placed ourselves in the midst of the battle. He has placed us there and he must equip us for the battle. David says here in Tehillim, Psalms 25. And I want to begin reading out of verse 1. He identifies the one that he cries to. He says, uh, to you, oh yeah. He says, do I, kara, I lift with exaltation. Uh, he said, I lift up my nefesh. I lift up my being, my life, uh, the substance that I am, you have made. Uh, so I lift it up. If you are sure, be lifted up. Uh, he draws all men unto him. And so that we said, I lift up my substance, my nephesh unto you, Yah. He says, oh my Abba, he says, I botak, I trust, I trust in you. I trust in you. When we truly trust botak, we have confidence and nothing defies that confidence or destroys it. Nothing can dismantle the botach of Yah. He said, in you I trust. He said, let me not be ashamed. Let me not be brought down before my enemies. Let not my enemies triumph over me. He said, Yah, you are the one that I trust then. We cannot have the testimony that uh, where was his great mighty Abba in the midst of all of his dilemmas uh, and his, uh, his afflictions. Uh, we cannot allow the enemy to assault our minds uh, to ask us that question. Uh, we are waiting, we are chava, we are waiting eagerly with expectation uh, from our Abba. And that is why we will sabha, we will tarry uh, and wait without complaining. Uh, Upon the promises of our Abba. He says, yes, ya, khen, khen, yes, my Abba. He said, let none from the least to the greatest. He said, let none that cover on you. Uh, let them not be ashamed. Let none that wait on you, ya, let them not be ashamed. And say, where was my Abba in the midst of all of my agonizing afflictions? He said, let them not be ashamed, yeah. He said, let them not be ashamed. Let them, uh, let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Those that defy the mitzvah, the Torah of Yah. But we that wait according to his precepts, his commandments. Uh, he cried, let them not be ashamed. For they cover, they wait eagerly upon you, Yah. They allow your Torah to be bound in their bosom. They take your word, your daba, your promises. That is what his word is. The word, word is the same as the word promises. It is his daba, it is his speech, his utterance, his words that he speaks unto Yisra'ya. And then he cries to Yah in verse 4. 
He says, show me your derach, your way. Show me how to walk in the Torah. Show me how to walk in the light, the near of Yah. Show me how to walk in your Shuach HaMashiach. Reveal that unto me, Yah. He said, oh, Yah. And then he says, I want you to teach me your Urech, your paths. The path of the Sadiq man, the just man. Teach me the paths of the ordinance of your Torah, your statutes. Teach me that, Yah. And once he teach us those things, we will begin to wait Chava. And we look eagerly because we see the promises in the Torah of Yah. And we know by his immutability he cannot lie. So everything that he speaks unto us is Imad, is truth. We know that Yah cannot lie, Yisra'ah. And there is a tremendous assault against the integrity of his promises. And our minds must battle that. We must learn how to wait eagerly. We must, uh, we must have the yachol of Yah, the patience as Eob, that we will not charge Yah foolishly, nor will we abuse Him because we don't think that things are going according to our expectation. We began to do that, it began to induce the sabah, the sabah, the tarring. We wait, we, we hope uh, with great anticipation uh, in what Yah has spoken unto us. He says unto Yah in verse 5, uh, he says, Yah leads. Not only show but lead me in your truth, your emat, your Torah. We know what truth is. It is the Torah of Yah. He said, lead me. And when one leads, it is that individual that is following, uh, is being guided. So guide us, Yah, in the light of Yeshua HaMashiach. That we walk down the straight and narrow path uh, that leads unto the eternal life of Omar, Yah. Lead me in your Torah. And he said, I want you to teach me, uh, for you are the sovereign ruler. You are the master. You are the one that brings... Uh, your shach or deliverance, he says, on you, only on Yah, do I wait all the day. See, on Yah we must cover. We must look eagerly. There must be an anticipation. And we must wait on Yah. But trials come, but don't uh, allow us, Yah, to be brought to shame before your enemies. He is not going to allow Yisra'ah. We began to sob out to tarry. We began to wait upon Yah with great anticipation. We look toward Him. We wait. We know that there is a reward, Yisra'ah. We don't look without anticipation. We look with anticipation. And we look eagerly because we don't trust in the strength of our flesh. We wait upon you. And he wants us to wait. Just stand still and wait. Don't move. Just wait. How do I overcome this adversary? Just stand still. Huh? That we said I wait on the Yahushua. The Yahushua of Yah. You are commanded, Yisra'ah, you stand still uh, and see the salvation, the Yoshak. See your deliverance from the hands uh, of the most mightiest army upon the, the face of the earth. Uh, and that's all we must do. We must look. All the day long we wait. But I'm being afflicted, wait. I'm being pressed beyond measure, just wait. It seems as though that I have no resolve or no strength. Just wait. All the day long you wait on Yah. You just wait on Yah. What is the resolution of the matter? Just wait. Look eagerly for Him to resolve the matter. For there is no power or weapon that can stand against the might of Yah. We don't have the enemies like Daiweed had. He said, teach and guide me in the concepts of your truth uh, and cause them to, to, to be repeated in my mind continuously that I rehearse them in my inward parts, yeah, that I may have, uh, that I may wait. Yeah. 
and we must wait upon him. Yisraya, we must. In that process, we endure whatever that Yah has commanded us to do, or the trial that he has commanded upon us, and we do it without murmuring and complaining. Don't complain. Because if we do that, then we're not trusting in Yah. Once we began to uh, enact that kind of spirit upon us or out of us, we know that we're not trusting in the hand of the Most High. Hallelujah. I want to show us a simple truth, uh, Yisraya, and this is what we must do uh, in order that uh, we will be kept. That we knew uh, in the 21st verse of the same chapter, we must have this. We cannot be pretenders. To Helium 25, 21, he says unto Yah, let integrity and uprightness preserve me. He said, I want the integrity of the Torah and the upright ways of the Torah. I want that to preserve me. He says, for I wait on you. And if we trust in Yah, that is uh, the integrity of our love. Well, Yah, you don't know what I'm going through. He made us. He knows our form, Yisrael. Yeah. It is not we ourselves that have formed us. Uh, so we allow the integrity of his words, the uprightness of his truth uh, to preserve us and keep our minds uh, preserved from the way of the wicked one. And then in the midst of that, then we wait on him. We cover, we wait. We eagerly look for him with great anticipation. We wait on him, Yisrael. What else is it to wait on in this hour? We're waiting for some kind of financial resolve. That's nothing. It is temporal. But these are eternal things, Yisraya. We allow the integrity of Torah. And Torah speaks from the volume of Yah's bosom. And it is the uprightness. It is the sadiq. It is the justness of Yah. So we allow that to preserve us, Yisraya. In the midst of your battles, you allow the integrity of Torah to preserve you. The uprightness of Torah and the uprightness of Yeshua HaMashiach to preserve you. And then the, your mind will constantly gravitate to Yah. And you will trust and wait on Him. You will wait on Yah. You will look toward Him. You will stand waiting, enduring for the promises of Yah. That's what we must do. It's not a complex situation. It's not difficult. You just wait. What do I do? Just wait. Well, I'm getting tired. Even in your tiredness, just wait. That's all you do. Don't try to eagerly surpass you. And that is what our flesh causes us to do. We want to try to surpass him. And once we begin to do that, we're going to fall. And then we fall into hurtful shames and great pains. That's what happens to us. We must eagerly wait upon him this is a man that can speak with this volume he says in verse 22 he says yeah we want you i want you redeem yisraya oh yeah out of all his troubles his stress his kara his distress and trials and great agony just wait and he deliver us out of all of our distress, Yisrael. It's not going to come any other way. Let Yah deliver us out of all of our stress and distress. He will do that if we simply wait, trusting in the promises of Almighty Yahweh. He shall deliver us. But in the midst of all of that, let the strength of our bosom be integrity, that we live honest, with honor and integrity among each other, that we walk in the uprightness of his standards according to his mitzvah, that we will not be wrong in the ach or achot, 
We live according to the promises of Yah. Let us walk with integrity, not with pretense and falsehood, but we walk in the integrity of Yah, and that is being sincere, being led and taught by the Torah of Yah. And it will represent uh, the very presence of Yahshua HaMashiach, not only the representation of Him, uh, but it produced the fruit, the peri of Yah. And we will be fruitful in all that we do. Whatever we lay our hands on, it shall prosper. Whatever we touch, it shall prosper. I believe that. I was talking to my precious Zachin uh, MacDonald last night. He is one of the few old men that I, when he talks, I don't say a thing. I really don't. And of course he had me weeping and the prophecy, the words uh, that he spoke. I called my Isha down uh, in the office and I said, just listen. And so... She stood there and as he preached to me, I just wept the whole time as he preached, as he preached to me. Beautiful old man, near in Junction City, Kansas. And the words that he spoke unto me, they were a great volume. But he said this to me, he says, It is one thing that we as a nation of people must understand. We can never increase the knowledge of the power of Yah until uh, we understand the repetitiveness uh, of the words of Yah that we constantly play them out in our minds to hear it, uh, to repeat it. We must do that. He said that is how nations and minds of people are uh, programmed. Uh, it is a, a repetitive thing. And of course, my weeping and my howling uh, I couldn't hear what he was saying, but I heard the ruach of this old man, and he preached for about an hour, and he says to me, I love you, ruach, and I will see you, and I will see you not somewhere in the United States. I'm going to see you there. I wish he would write those words down or speak that prophecy again because... It's beyond my ability to even to reverberate what he said, but I know that it was a great strength in my bosom. Ya Barakyu Arazakhain McDonald, there in Junction City. He is listening. Believe me, he's there. Hallelujah. Listen, Yisraya. I, I want to direct your attention to, to first Kefa, first Peter. It is one thing that if we must understand, Yah, he is long suffering with us. And if he can wait on us, well, we can't wait on him. He has waited on Yisrael. This, this descriptive uh, spiritual uh, awakening here in 1 Peter, chapter 3, verse 8. And Kephar says unto the true lineage of the Hebrew yeah, Yisraelites, he says, for Mashiach, HaMashiach also, he has once suffered for our hata'a, our sins. He says, the Sadiq, the just, for the unjust, that he might bring us to Yah. That's why he suffered. That he may bring us into the presence of Almighty Yahweh. Being put to death in the flesh, but quick and made alive by the Ruach HaKodesh. Through which... He also went and he proclaimed, he preached to the Ruachim in prison, those in the promises of Abraham, but had not seen the fruition of the promises of Abraham. He says, who, and we are characterized right here, who before that time were disobedient. Were we not disobedient? Listen. Even though we were disobedient, Yisraeli, we were vile and we were sinful. Look at Yah. Although we were disobedient, when the patience, when the Yahul of Yah, when the patience of Yah waited, he chava, he waited. Even though there were those that were 40, 50, 60, he still through his chava, he waited on them. Although you're sure the promises were in your sure, he still waited. Just like he did Yisraya in the days of Noah. He waited for us. We are in the days of Noah. We're eating and drinking and marrying and giving and marrying. We don't even know the very agony of Yah that is about to be poured out. And they didn't know. 
So we are in the days. We are in the Akharith Israel. And Yah has waited on us patiently. He waited on us even in our sin uh, actions and activities. Uh, he has waited on us, Yisrael. <clears throat> this is just not some kind uh, of, 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 a, of an incident with Noah. This is a present day truth. Uh, as it was in the days of Noah, so it shall be in the days of the coming uh, of the Son of Yah. We're not in those days. Uh, so we're in the days of Noah. And he waited patiently. And so he has waited. He has waited on us. He has brought those in the, that were older than others. He had brought those in that were young. But he still waited on them. He has suffered uh, even the, the shame of our sins. Uh, but he has waited, Yisrael. He waited. He has covered. Because he knew when the dumb of Yahshua spoke to their bosom, uh, they would hear. Because he had opened their ears to hear. So he has waited patiently. If he has waited on us, then surely we can wait on him. If he waited patiently upon us, surely we can wait on Yah. He did not condemn us in all of our sins. In all of our Ways of unrighteousness. He did not destroy us. Uh, he still waited. In all of our foul actions indeed. He waited on us. Uh, he waited Yisrael. Uh, because you were part of that house. Uh, and that heritage that he was going to save. So he waited on us. And if he has waited on us. Certainly we can wait. On him Yisrael. He said, while the ark was preparing, as he prepared us, prepare us, y'all, to be a sanctuary, pure and kadosh, tried and pure. He's preparing us. Your sure is preparing us. The Torah is preparing us. And he is waiting patiently. He said, we're in few that is eight nefesh. We're saved by water. He's going to save all Yisraya. He's going to save his house. He's going to deliver his elect. And we are the boy here of Yah. He's going to save his people. He waits on us, Yisraya. He waits on us to soba before him, to tarry. That we hope, even in the midst of all of our agony, he was in agony waiting on us. And although he showed us his mercies daily, he still waited. His mercies are renewed every day. Not just upon we that are Yisraeli, upon every man. He shows the greatness of his kindness. He shows him that. And so he has waited upon us in all of our vile ways. Then we're going to wait on him in the pureness as he cleanses us and wash us. And regenerate us from all of our unclean ways and actions uh, that bring shame upon him. Uh, we're going to wait, Yisrael. Yeah. We're going to stand forth and we're going to do it with the right attitude. Uh, we're going to take a stand for him. When we wait on him, we take a, we take a stand for him. Uh, and when the battles come, we still remain. When we are knocked down and the enemy try to knock us down, we still stand. When the enemy uh, assault us and insult the integrity of Yah, we don't allow that to dismantle or to destroy our attitude uh, toward the promises of Yah. We still wait, Yisrael. Yeah. We're going to be persistent in our actions. Uh, we're not going to relent and give in to the enemy. We're going to wait on Yah. We're going to wait. He did not give up on Eho because uh, Hashatan accused him. Uh, he waited on Eho. That's why Eho Yahol is the same. He waited on the patience uh, of Almighty Yob. Yob waited for Yah. He had patience. Uh, this patience of the Yahol. Uh, and we're going to have patience and wait, Yisrael. Yeah. We know what the tomorrow promises us. It promises us the fulfillment of Almighty Yah. His word being fulfilled in our lives and in our bosom. We know what tomorrow is. Whether we're alive or dead, we know what tomorrow is. We have take in the, in the Torah of Yah. We have hope in the promises of Almighty Yah. 
So let's wait on that. We're not waiting, waiting to get a million dollar check. We're waiting on the promises of Yah. Yisrael. Hallelujah. There's a tremendous reward and a result as we wait upon Yah. For the Torah shows us that there's promises of waiting. Turn quickly to Yahob James. James in chapter 1 and verse 3. He tells us, Yada, knowing this, we have experienced James chapter 1 verse 3. He says, knowing this, Yisraya, that the trying of your imuna, it brings about Yakul. When your faith is tried. It brings about the ability to wait upon Yah. Without complaining, we prevail. We endure. We overcome Yisrael. We have power to stand. We are able to stand Yisrael. So we know that in these trials, uh, it is working something in us. Yada, knowing that the trying. That the enemy is trying to subdue uh, and draw out the element of faith. Uh, he knows without Imuna we cannot please Yah. Yeah. Knowing that the trying of your faith, uh, we must understand that. Uh, we must bear that to be a record in our minds uh, that these trials uh, are to bring out the excellence of Yah. Yeah. That's what our trials are for. Yah's not trying us to destroy us. Uh, he knows the frame of us all. Uh, it's fragile. Uh, it has no strength. Uh, he knows that. He wants us to know that the trying uh, of your imuna, what imuna? The measure that he has, uh, he has placed in your bosom. Uh, it brings about this yachol. You say, well, wait on Yah. As the old ones would sing, I will trust in Yahweh. I will trust in Yahweh. When you trust, you wait. We trust what he is doing. We trust even the trials that we are being buffeted by. It brings about an excellence of his patience, his yakul, and calls us. To have this power to endure and to wait. He said, but let patient have her tomim or perfect mitzvah, her perfect work. That you may be perfect and complete, wanting nothing. Do you hear that, Yisraya? When we allow the power of patience to have its perfect work in us. And patience, he uses that figure of speech let her because patience is a comfort to Yisrael. we may not think it is but it is a patience how does it come by the trying of our imuna you're not going to wait on Yah without being tried and when patience has expressed herself in the excellence of the perfection of Yah then you are complete in the power of Yahshua HaMashiach even in death, uh, you're not fearful. Even in the midst uh, of the agonizing onslaught with your enemies, uh, you, will not, uh, you will not relent. You're persistent in the ways of Yah, in the walk of Yah. You don't throw your hands up. You just wait. You just hold fast. You don't complain. You endure. You do it eagerly. You soba. You tarry. Before Almighty Yah, you wait upon Yah. And you wait, not just waiting, but you wait with tremendous expectation. You know He's going to fulfill His promises. Why? Because your faith has elevated you to that level. Your faith has brought you up above the restraints, the constraints, the battles of your own natural mind. You know that the promises of Yah the yea and amen. You know that they are real, Yisrael. And even your flesh cannot bring you uh, under the bondage of that doubt that you don't trust Yah. So we must allow patience uh, to present the perfect works. Uh, 
In order for patience to have the perfect works, our imuna is going to be tried. Our imuna is going to be tried. And our imuna being tried is because we're waiting patiently. We're waiting, just wait. We're going to wait as the old ones would say, I'm going to wait to see what the end shall be. We're going to wait and see what shall be the fruit of the end, Yisraya. What else can we do, tell me? Nothing else. We can try to alter things or change things, but it's not going to produce the strength that we need for the battle that's ahead. So let us allow patience to have her perfect works as we wait upon Yah, as we hope in his mitzvah, the promises of Yah, they're real unto us, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Shaul tells us, as he writes unto Galusia, there's only way, only one way, and by only one power that we can wait, Yisraya. This is a beautiful verse here. If you get nothing out of this tonight, I want you to hear this in Galusia, Galatians. Hallelujah. It shows us how to wait on Yah. And gives us the reason why we should wait. Hallelujah. I want you to hear this. Understand some of the experiences that Daweed had in the midst of his enemies driving against him. Look at what Shaul says here in Galusia, Galatians chapter 5. And verse 5. He says, My ach, my chutz, the promise of Yisra'ya, he says, For we, for we, through the ruach ha'chodash, through the living power of Yah, wait. You cannot wait in the strength of your flesh. You cannot, Yisra'ya, because our flesh, we know, I know that, we all know, it's very impatient. And the only way you're going to do that is through the Ruach. For we, through the Ruach, wait. We wait, Yisra'ya. We cover. We look. With anticipation, we start. Our attitude is not altered. He said, for we, through the Ruach, wait for the promises or the tigva, the hope of Sadiq or Sadiqa, the righteousness of Yah, how by faith. That's the only way. That's the only way we're going to wait for the promises of Yah. It's through the Ruach Yisra'ya. We're not going to accomplish it any other way. You're not going to wait by the power and the strength of the arm of flesh. It's not going to be done. That's why we must be filled and empowered with the Ruach HaKodash. It is through the power of the Ruach of Yah we wait Yisra'ya. We wait. We wait for the hope or the tigva. The promises of Almighty, yeah, the righteousness of his Torah, the righteousness of his promises by Imuna. So in order for us to have the perfect Imuna, we know that the trying of our Imuna, it brings about patience, the ability to wait, the power to wait without struggling against Yah. It is not that we're struggling with ourselves, we're struggling against him. And we cannot overthrow him. He has ordained all things for our lives according to his timetable. He is precise in all of his actions. And everything he does, Yisraya, whether we sense it, we don't understand things at time. It's for our own excellence, for our own time. He is not trying to destroy his people. He's trying to destroy that element in us. That always insulting and assaulting him. But he is for us. If Yah be for us, who can be against us? The whole world can be against us. And he is for his people. He will not hold no tough thing from them that walk upright. I know there are trials at times. But it is to make our imuna strong and us to wait. Even as he bring to fruition his promises, uh, he calls a greater resolve in us uh, that there is nothing of opposition that come against our minds uh, and the will of his purpose. And that is what we do to please him will cause us to falter or, or to back down, Yisra'ya. 
He knows what he is doing. He does. He is the one that made us. So he knows what he is doing. Don't doubt him. Uh, let's wait on Yah Yisra'ya. Let's kava. But I don't see it happening. That's all right. It's happening. I don't see no fruit. Don't worry about the fruit of it. Uh, you don't see no fruit on those trees out there, do you? But there's fruit there. There's fruit there. So was this man cutting uh, and pruning? Uh, that's what he's doing, Yisra'ya. He's pruning us. He's pruning us for the season. And so in the process of pruning, uh, he's causing us to wait. He's pruning us. You don't see the fruit out there. You don't see it. It's the buds of life on the tree that's caused the leaves to fall off. Uh, and that is why the power of the Ruach, when it begins to bud in us, uh, it causes all those dead things. We know what the dead things are, the sin in our lives, uh, to be rooted out, Yisrael. So we just wait. Just hold fast. I'm going to, I got something here for you. I'm just going to read these scriptures. I don't know how they, they're coming out, but they'll come out right, all right? They'll come out, all right? Hallelujah. I, I, want, to, I want us to examine some of these verses here. Look, in the, look, look quickly in the book of Tehillia. <clears throat> Uh, Psalms 27 is, is how Dawid, he gives us an insight of great resourcefulness. As in the midst of all of his great agonies, what he did, uh, as, as he saw the resolution of Yah in his life. Uh, Psalms 27, uh, verse 100, Psalm 27, verse 14. He tells us to uh, wait. Not run, he says, uh, wait. I want you to wait on Yah. And when you wait on Yah, he says, simply be of excellent courage. Be of tough courage. Uh, just be strong. When one is courageous, uh, you have the ability to challenge that uh, which is presenting itself against you and against Yah. He says, just wait. Be of good, be of excellent courage. You need to be courageous. I know sometimes it's difficult for us to be courageous in the midst of the great agony and battles. He says, wait. But we must wait. And then we must be of excellent courage. And he says, of all things, Yisra'ya, he, Yah. Can this man speak with great insight, Dawid? He said, and Yah, not might, but shall, a confirmation, he shall, ko'ach. He shall strengthen your love. He said, and again, I say to you all, uh, he said, just wait. I say, wait on Almighty Yah. So if you get, if you garner nothing tonight, just wait. Wait on Yah and just be of courage. Be of great courage. You think you're by yourself. Don't, don't think that way. You're not by yourself. Uh, yours with you. Uh. You think you're walking down a tremendous dark avenue uh, and the powers of hell uh, are engaged in this spiritual warfare of your mind. Uh, just wait. You're not alone. He has not left you alone, my ach, my hot. Uh, you're not alone. Just wait. Just simply wait on you. And again, above all things, uh, in the midst of all of the battles, uh, just wait. Just, just wait on him. Try him, just wait. That we could speak with excellence of experience in this matter. When the enemies that were engaged against him to, to overthrow him uh, within his own circle of Ak, yet the enemies of Yah, he had to wait on Yah. He said, Just wait. Just have. But I can look eagerly in the midst of all these great agonies. Uh, my, my eyes are deceiving me. No, they're not deceiving you. Just wait. Just wait. Things are not as they seem to be. Although they may look to appear in a manner, it doesn't mean that it's that way. Those things, although you may think that it's meant to destroy, it's meant to strengthen and to build us up in the most chadosh imona and the promises of Almighty Yah. So just wait on Yah. And then when we began to do that, we can do what he commands us here, Dawid, in chapter 37, verse 7. I like this part here. Hallelujah. He says unto Helium 37, verse 7. I want to speak from this experience of this man for a moment here. He says uh, in Helium Psalms 37, 37, he tell us to rest 
in Yah. Just rest. Just take comfort in the promises of Yah. And he says, and wait patiently for him. Rest in Yah. Rest in the promises of Omar Yah. Rest in the Torah. And that is that you will not allow yourself uh, to be agitated uh, by, the, by, by the onslaught of hell. Just rest. Rest, Yisraya. Just take your ease. Rest in Yah. And then wait patiently for him. And Yah says, that we said, don't, don't get disturbed because of him who prospered his way. Don't look at those that you think are gaining and possessing in their own way. Don't even fret yourself. Don't allow yourself to be troubled by what you perceive to be something that is of great substance. He said, because of the man who bring wicked devices to pass. He commands us in verse 8. He says, stop, just cease from anger. Don't get so upset about the smallest of matters. Don't become perturbed. He says, cease from anger. He said, and abandon, forsake wrath, af, the resentment, the hatred. He forsake it. And fret not, or don't even think in your mind uh, in any way to do anything that is evil against Yah. Don't do that, Yisra'ah. He says, for the evildoers uh, shall be cut off. Do you hear that? But he gives us a promise here. He says, but those, those that cover, those that wait upon Yah, they shall inherit the riches, the old land, they're going to inherit all things. The evil works and the ones that work evil, they're going to be cut off. They're going to be chara. They're going to be cut off, destroyed, exterminated. But if we wait on Yah, we're going to inherit the old land. We're going to inherit the promises of Yah in this earthly vessel. I know what it says that we shall inherit the earth, but we shall inherit the promises of Yah in these earthly vessels, Yisraeah. If we just wait, if we just cover, just wait. We look eagerly, we stand, we keep our attitude standing in the principles of Almighty Yahweh and just wait on Him. That's all. I, I know how it seems, uh, the ones that are working evil, as though, uh, it, as though they have no troubles, as though that they have uh, the abundance. Uh, but Yah says uh, that you're going to inherit the riches of the Olam, the earth. Uh, your vessel shall uh, inherit the riches uh, of Almighty Yah. And He's not commanding us to do much, is He? He's just asking us to rest. Isn't that, isn't that so simple, Yisrael? It doesn't take much, just wait. That's all he says, come on, just, just stand. But, but I'm being, being battled against. I, I know, stand, just stand. Just, just stand still. That's all we do, just stand. But y'all, you don't know the agony. I know the agony, my son. All I want you to do is just wait. Just wait there. Just wait there. It's almost like one saying to the child, wait right there. In a few seconds, the child gets fidgety and the child began to move. Just stay right there. You must constantly remind them, stay here. See what Yah is trying to tell us to stay in his truth. Stay in the promises. That's all we must do. Just, just wait. Wait on Yah. That's a great inheritance for us, Yisra'ah. Hallelujah. And all thing we have to do is just wait. 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 If he asks us to climb Mount Everett, it will cost tens of thousands of dollars just to buy the necessary equipment. It will cost that kind of money to get there. It will take years of planning and you just can't climb the mountain any time of the year. So he's telling us to climb a mountain that is higher than Everett. Simply by waiting. Just wait on Yah. Just wait in the promises. Come on. We say that the Torah is so high. Can't get over it so low. Is that what we're saying? It? So high. Can't get over that, the Torah. So he's asking us to climb a mountain that is higher than Everett. And the only way we overcome is by waiting. We climb to the summit of this mountain. Uh, that our hearts are filled with his truth and a love for his Hamashiach, Yisra'ya. Just wait on you. Just wait. Chava. Just wait. Just endure. 
Establish your mind in Torah and just wait on Yah, Yisra'ya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. David says in Psalm 62, 5, he says, not only do I wait, but he says here in Tehillim 62, 5, That verse that I read, it was Tehillim 37, 34. Uh, I didn't see that. I told you I haven't had time to really just look at the verses here. I just have some, some of the cafe here. But look at this in Tehillim 62, verse 5. <clears throat> David said, my nefesh, wait. Wait where? In the Torah of Yah. Only upon Yah. For my expectation is from Almighty Yahweh. So when we wait on him, we expect him. Our expectation is from him. So he said, my life, the substance of whom I am, I wait upon Yahweh because I know where my expectation is from. I expect Yah because I know his promises. And they're granted unto Yisrael, so I wait my substance, the being of whom I am. I wait patiently. I wait upon Yah. I wait in the promises of the Torah. My mind constantly absorbs the Torah of Yahweh because my expectation comes out of whom he is. And his word is truth because that is who he is. His Torah. And so let us as a nation of people began to wait. Chava. And expect. You just don't wait without expectation. Isn't Kava to eagerly expect? You have eager expectation. That is where the Kava is. That's why we soba. That's why we tarry. Because we wait expecting eagerly from Yah for the promises and we look for the take for the hope of his promises Israel. so we wait on Yah, and we wait knowing that we're expecting it's like one that's waiting at the house for the bride the, the bridegroom for the bridegroom to come and she waits the women that have been waiting for years and even though the man they have not he may have been Lost in battle, but they have waited. They have looked at the dress every now and then to, to reaffirm their waiting. So we wait because we are expecting. You only wait when you're expecting. If you're not expecting anything, you don't wait. If you're not expecting anything, you're not waiting. And that's the truth. If we wait upon Yah, He's going to renew our strength, Yisra'ya. They that wait upon Almighty Yah. And if we don't wait upon Him, we're not going to have strength to mount up as an eagle or wings of an eagle. We're not going to have that strength, Yisra'ya. So we must wait upon our Abba. We must wait upon Yah. There's a profound utterance in the Torah in the prophet of the Nobi, Hoshea, Hosea, Hosea chapter 12. It shows us how Yah gets us, Yisraya, to the place in this verse, how we wait upon Him. How do we get to that place in our minds, in our ruach, to wait upon Yah? I want to read this to us quickly in Hoshea, Hosea 12, 6. He says unto Yisraya, Therefore, turn you to Yah, your Abba. He commands us to keep mercies. Hosea 12, 6. He said, keep or shema, guard. The racham, the mercies of Yah. And also his mishpat, his judgment. And he says, and wait on Yah continuously. We must wait on him continuously. That's why we must guard, we must the word keep is shama. We must guard mercy. And we must guard the judgment of Yah. We must guard our hearts against 
the very insidious works of hell. Uh, and once we do that, Yisra'ya, this is how he gets us to that place where we wait continuously upon him uh, through his mercies uh, and his judgment. He judges us. Uh, he lets us know that in his judgment, your emona is not strong enough for the battle that's ahead. Uh, so you must go through the fire. I want your, your, your emona to be like precious gold. So just wait in the midst of the fire like Daniel. Wait. You shall not be consumed by the trials. The trials are not going to consume us. They're not going to destroy us, Yisrael. So we must wait continuously without ceasing. We must wait on Yah. And it is by the power of His mercies and His judgment to cause us to wait continuously. Just wait continuously upon Him, Yisrael. Because it's one thing that I do know as Torah teach us. That there is a great reward for those that wait upon Yah. It is. And we find that in the book of Lamentation. Echa. Echa. Lamentation chapter 3 verse 24. <clears throat> I want you to see this great reward for your waiting. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 24. Jolomo says that. Yah is my portion, says my nephesh. Therefore will I take the, or have this hope in him. He says, Yah is tough to them that wait for him. That's all right by me. He is tough to them that wait for him. To the nephesh that seeks after him. It says uh, it is tough, it is excellent for us uh, that a man should both seek for a hope. He should both hope and quietly just cover weight for the deliverance of all Maria. Yeah, just do it quietly. Don't do it with murmuring, murmuring and complaining. Yeah? It is excellent for us as Yah's children, not just one, but to both take vow to hope and we quietly wait on Yah. We sit in the comfort of his Torah in the bosom of Yahshua and we just wait for what? His deliverance. We wait for the deliverance of Yah. That's how we get it. We wait quietly for the deliverance of Yah. He says it is tough for a gaba or a valiant warrior that he bear the yoke in his youth. It is the best thing for us to bear, even in our youthfulness, uh, the very promises of Yah that when we get old, uh, they will not seem vague to us and we will not take delight in that. That's why we train. There's a message I must teach you. That shows us how to train and the power of training. I know we hear words, but we have no cognitive understanding of what Yah is trying to convey to us. Because this modern day English, it is one of the most repugnant, harsh languages of robbery and thievery upon the face of the earth. It is a language to confuse our minds. So we wait quietly without murmuring and complaining. Upon our Abba. Can we do that, Yisra'ya? Sure we can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because our enemy seems strong, doesn't he? That's what Dawid said. He says in the 59th chapter of Tehillim, verse 9. We can expect this from Yah if we wait. He said, because of his strength, Tehillim 59, 9, and he's talking about his enemies, because uh, of the strength of his enemy, uh, he said, well, I wait uh, on you, uh, for Yah is my defense. Uh, he said, I'm going to wait on Yah. Because of my enemies, uh, I'm going to wait on Yah. And because of one of the most powerful enemies that we are up against, it is our own actions of our own mind. We have to wait, we have to kava, we have to expect all things from Almighty Yah. We must do that, Yisra'ya, because if we don't, then woe unto us as a nation 
a people. Hallelujah. I want to conclude this here, Yisrael. I have a conclusion here on this waiting on Yah. It's one thing that Yah does. The revelation of Yahshua gives us the bread, the lechem of truth. But Daiweed says this to us. To Helium Psalms 104. A few verses I want to conclude with here tonight. As I said, I wasn't prepared, but I am prepared. Hallelujah. He says, as he speaks unto us as a nation of people, that we need help. I know I do. Help me, yeah. 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 I kind of give us this in the conclusion of our waiting and even a letter, the writing of Shaul. But Dawi says in Tehillim 104 and verse 27, he says, these or those we, these wait all Upon Yah, who are these us, that Yah may give them meat in due season? When we wait upon Yah, He will give us the meat. He will give us the lechem. He will give us the spiritual knowledge of Torah in due season. He will not put nothing on us that we cannot bear. He will not overburden us, Yisrael. But these that wait, these that chava, these that wait all upon Yah, He will give us the meat, the bread. He will give us the offering in the time of the season that we need it, that we may have the strength to overcome. That is our Abba. That is what he will do for us, Yisraya. And that is it, Yisraya. We as a nation above all things, above all, we must wait. We must not wait in, 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 in our own perception of things, but we must wait in the word of Yah and the Torah. And that word of Yah is the promise of your sure hammer Shia. Hallelujah. David says, Psalms 130, verse 5. He said, I wait for you, Yah. My nephesh does wait. And in his word, in your sure, do I have take by do I hope? You have no hope of waiting outside of your sure hammer Shia. None whatsoever. None. You cannot wait on Yah Yisrael at all. And after all the battles and all of the assaults of the enemy, Shaul gives us a great comfort as he writes unto Ephesia, unto the elect, uh, the elect there in Ephesia, Ephesians chapter 11, chapter 6, verse 11. He says, I want you to nothing, to put on the whole armor of Yah, that you may be able to chava, I know it says stand, but to wait in the promises of Yah. He said, put on the whole armor of Yah, that you may be able to stand. That is what the word chava means, to stand, to stand in the place, to wait without complaining, without murmuring, or any such thing. Thing. We must take a stand to stand forth, Yisrael. That is what Kava is. We take our stand in nothing but the Torah of Yah. He says, put on the whole arm of Yah that you may be able to stand to wait against the wiles of Hashatan. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high place. Again, he command and commend unto us, wherefore, my ach, take unto you the whole armor of Almighty Yahweh, that you may be able to withstand the ability to wait, holding fast, to the Torah of Yah to stand or to wait in the evil days and having done all, having waited, just stand. When one stand, they are chava, they're waiting. He says, stand fast, stand therefore, wait. Having your loin, your minds, girds. Our minds and our hearts must be established in the Torah of Yah. He says, having your mind girded about with truth, and then you having on the identity, the breastplate of Sadiq, you have the plastery of your sure, not on your arm, but in your bosom. 
above all the battles and trials, above all that we endure, let's wait on Yah to Kanva, to stand in Torah, to wait on the promises, eagerly stand without doubting, without, uh, without trepidation, without fear. But we just wait, period. Just wait on Yah. For we wait on him, he shall feed us our portion in due season. May the riches of Yah rest upon you, Yisrael. May we chava, may we wait on Yah. May his promises be fulfilled in all of us as a nation of people, as his delight. May he cause our levim to delight in him, in Yahshua HaMashiach. You that have joined us, we do pray that Yah has brach. May Yah brach, let us stand to our feet. We're going to face toward Yerushalayim and offer a pala before Yah Ar Abba in your shoes name. We do brach you, we bow our hearts tonight before you for all of your rich and splendid blessings. Speak to us through the power of your Torah on tonight, your Jaba, your Imad. Strengthen Yisraya. Give us to the trying of our Ebona, the ability and the power to wait. We shall wait upon you, Yah. Your sure mighty name, bring the Ach in safely. Protect them down the highway, Yah, our precious Ach. I know that their bodies are tired. Give them, give them rest in their bodies. Bring them home safe and take our Zachain Shemri down the road and his Isha. And all Yis Yisraya, our Achot Jennifer, and also our Hope Blanc and our children. Watch over us all this night, we ask in your sure's name. And with the breath of our nefesh, we cry, Hallelujah! 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 Amen. Yabrak Yisraya. Hallelujah.